Hi everyone, it's Christy. Welcome back. I believe this is part five of our haberdashery lap book. Um, <laughs> I've been calling this the magic envelope. The magic will be if I get it put together correctly. Um, I think I have it. I've, <laughs> I've watched Patricia's videos a couple times. This It seems fun and it seems like, oh, well that's not so hard. And then it comes apart and you're like wait what so we're gonna just I'm just gonna go through this if you have any questions you can either leave them in the comments section below I will try to help otherwise um, you can also go to Patricia's video because she does very slow uh, precise instructions and so I think I've got it and uh, but I understand why she <laughs> says that it gets confusing so that's why she calls it a mystery envelope but you need two of the six by nine these are just Dollar Tree envelopes so on the first one you're going to let's just call this envelope one flap on the left um, fold it back on on the crease that's already there and then fold it in half okay and then crease that really well burnish it with your bone folder okay now um, Patricia opens it up and glues it you could also just sew down this crease um, what I did was I just opened this and I after I had folded I could see where the glue would go and so I just put a fine line of glue right down here because and the reason is um, and I think I need one more little drop of glue because looks like that went through um, right in the middle but uh, this is going to be and I think it would be okay um, but you don't want what you put in this pocket to fall into this side um, this pocket would be fine but it's this one because it's going to be facing up so um, when we're finished here I may just run a line of stitching uh, across there but uh, fold the flap back fold it in half open it um, you know get this either sewn down or glued down e even if you have to open this and glue in there and then glue this back down uh, and then I use the envelope punch you can use a circle punch uh, or you could leave it straight across whatever and then I just took my um, my scissors and cut off like just a, a sixteenth of an inch to here okay you don't need to cut anything on this side because you have this alright I did not do any um, rounding or anything to this flap I left the one that came with it because I think what I'm going to do is when I mat it I'm going to punch into the matted piece and you know go ahead and glue this down um, so that I'll have a matching notch so that's piece one fold the flap back fold it in half and glue the center and make a notch and open that at the top okay that's piece one and then piece two um, you close this just temporarily and score an inch and three quarters it's just about a eighth or a sixteenth of an inch wider than the envelope flap okay and then you fold that back so you have kind of a a zigzag here all right so that's piece two now we're going to take piece two and turn it around and we are going to insert that into piece one right here the flaps are the same way up okay so we're on the back side of the envelope there's a seam here and a seam here okay and that this second one is going to be inserted <laughs> easier said than done this is the hardest part right here and I'll tell you why because of the tape on there um, just like that okay and that's it so then this is going to be our pocket that drops down well if it's dropping down it needs to go this way alright 
So I'm just going to line that up a little bit. And then this fold will go back. Okay, so that is the entire pocket. And she suggests paper clipping it so you know which way it goes. So um, I do want to make sure that this is kind of lined up straight um, the best I can. It's not going to be perfect um, because the envelopes are far from perfect. And uh, But it'll be fine. Once we mat everything, it kind of blends together and it looks fine. So we have a side pocket here and this flips down. We'll have this piece, which we will be adding things to, and we will have a pocket here, and then fold this back up. This whole piece, let me take the paper clip back off, this whole piece will go up, and we will have some layout here, and then this that we folded um, will be a tuck spot, okay? So... The first thing that we need to do, I suppose, uh, would be ink everything. But I think I'm going to mat first, um, only because that, that's so much ink and so much time, and I think we could do it with the mat. So um, the first thing that you need to attach, and I've got, you can see this is overlapping. You don't want that overlapping. You want it just coming up to and then you're going to line it up with the sides here so this is going to come off again because we're going to insert a little piece of this inside here to kind of cover that back um, that's a little wide so I could use um, a piece from my collection here like a piece like this that might be fun in the back I think I'm gonna do that so these envelopes are six I'm gonna do and I want it to go this way so I think I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna turn it this way so I can line it up but I think I'm gonna do like five and five and three quarters well that will leave a big wide let's do five and seven eighths and then if it's too much, we'll cut it down. Ow. Forget how thick this cardstock uh, scrapbook paper is. Okay, now I think I don't need this much bigger than about, let's see, um, maybe three or four inches. Let's see how big that is. Yeah, let's do, let's do three and a half. We meet it halfway. Like that. All right, so this will be the first piece that you want to mat, and that is because it will help hold your two envelopes together. There's, it's a two-part process, part on the front, part on the back. So I'm going to slide this off, and I am going to, I, I'm going to dry fit it first, make sure it fits in there. Okay, it does, and I will be pushing that all the way to the end and attaching it to this and then we will be sliding this into this side like that and it'll be over that okay so let's re you know what I'm gonna put this in here like this get it where I want it and then I'm going to pull this out and I'm gonna add the glue around the edges Okay, like such. All right, and now we're going to insert this back into this piece, like that. Now, we want this to be a pocket, so um, we're gonna take this and I gotta get it where I want it and then I'm gonna paper clip it I think because um, it's kind of sliding up and down I want it just to meet I don't want it to um, I don't want it to overlap but there again like I said the envelopes are not straight so it might be bigger on one side than the other when it's all matted it's not going to matter I am going to well I'm not going to be able to 
do that because we have to lift this up like this. Uh, see, it slipped. Well, you know what? We're going to have some wiggle room and we're going to glue right under here. And this will hold the envelopes together. So I'll flip it back over and then I'll be able to adjust it again where I want it to be. Make sure it's lined up on the top and the bottom there. There we go. Okay, so let's just rub that down a little bit. And that will keep that where I want it. Oh, that's still sliding around. Okay, let's not rub it so hard then. Let's give it a chance to set up. Okay, so we've put that paper in between here, and you do that first so that you can take off the second half and get it in there, otherwise it would be impossible. That's like putting Kleenex back in the package, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I don't know why this is so poochy. Let's see if I can get some of that pooch out. No, it, it is just there, okay. So we have pocket down, pocket here, make sure there's no glue stuck, and then this goes back up, and this whole piece goes up. I did have a little ooze here. Let's rub that off. I cleaned my mat this morning um, and got up all of that. Well, there's a few pieces left, but uh, hand sanitizer, guys. I learned that from Tim Holtz. Um, you use the hand sanitizer and let it sit on there for a minute and then I just start scraping. I use my, um, I have a bunch of these Cricut things and I use that and just scrape and scrape and it softens up the glue and lets you uh, get it off. Okay, so the next piece that we're going to mat is this one. Okay, so we're on Remember where we were. This is the flip down pocket. Did I hit record? Guys, sometimes I'm a dingbat. Oh, I heard, I'm already down to 16 minutes. Uh, this might take a little longer. All right, so when this one is flipped up, this is going to be a tuck spot. So we want to mat this. So let me get my paper. I suppose, since this is on this side, I could still use this piece right here, um, and that will coordinate. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so what size do I need this to be? This needs to be the right way up. I always am measuring upside down. So let's do... Um, about four and a quarter. Okay. And we will glue that here. a hot one today. Hope you guys are all staying cool. It's September 1st and they're pushing the fall agenda on us but around here there's no fall until about November. So yeah this will be easier for me to ink uh, when I can just go around the edges like that. All right now turn that back around this way. This is going to go up and we need to mat this piece. So let's see, I have a bunch of these little cutoff pieces. This one, um, we can just, well if I do it this way, then I won't have to worry. Uh, about you finding the pencil marks. 
and erasing them because it will be on the back, oops, on the back side. All right. Cutting inside. We'll see if that is enough. And then this is going to get a couple of eyelets on it. I did buy some more eyelets and they came and they were the right ones. It it's a um it's let's see. I think I have the tags here somewhere. It's the standard eyelets. We are memory keepers. I I know they cost a little bit more, but I always buy these because they they punch better. Um they they split nicely and they make the little flower ring in the back. So I pay a little bit more, but that's it's worth it to me. Uh, this had gray, 15 of each, so it was black and white, and a light gray and a darker gray. And the one I'm using is kind of the darker gray. I call it a putty gray, but anyway, I want to say these were six, six something a piece. So when I got two, so I have a, I have an extra 30 eyelets in there. That should that should cover me on this project. So I am going to need to get my my ink out here before I glue that up. So let's uh, go around here. I am going to come in just a little bit there because I. I know that's going to show a little bit. Looks like I got it a little bit crooked. No, oh, can't save it. That's all right. All right. So we want to ink this as well. I might have to come back and get a little bit more ink, but we'll worry about that later. And I've already made a mess of myself, so. All right, let's see how that looks. Um, I've got to go up as I've got to go up almost to the top because um, the tape does. I don't know if the sticky part does. Let's see. No, I've got room. Okay, so I can come down a smidge. So if I put that right, I think I'll be okay if I put it right, uh, right up to that fold. So let's do that take off the release paper. Uh, I do want to go ahead and ink around this. Alright. So you may have seen on my uh, Facebook group, um, they demoed my kitchen, and then um, the granite that we chose didn't come in the right size <laughs> for our uh, island. Or it's not an island; it's a peninsula. Um, our peninsula is 36 and a half inches wide, and the one we chose only came up to 33. So we had to go pick one that came in a 30, 42. That's what it was. So while we're there, they showed us what we had chosen. And I was like, what? I don't remember cho choosing that one. And my husband said, yeah, that's the one we chose. Well, I had a completely different countertop in my head. Um, and when I Googled it, and I guess the wrong one had come up, and that's the one that I had in my head. So anyway... Uh, we picked a new one, and I really like it. All right, so I'm going to turn this around my direction, and then I'm going to make a couple of eyelets here, uh, eyelet holes, sorry. So um, let's use the center side. And I want to come down here to the edge, and I'm just going to, let's see. Let's hope this is center. I should be centering it on this, not this, because I'm not sure those flaps, but I think that's I think that's close enough. So I'm going to put an eyelet uh, here. 
and here. And hopefully I can see those. I know I can see that one. I don't know what happened to my lighting in, in, in here in the studio. I think the sun must have changed directions and that and that's what's causing the chaos because I am um, not changed directions but you know over the year we get at different angles of the sun and for some reason I'm having a heck of a time um, being able to to see and I've got both my lights on okay maybe it's just me all right I'm going to hold this closer so it doesn't slide. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Okay, trying to get it centered, but there. Oh, I can actually see this. Yeah. Or not. Thought I had it. Um, let me take my glasses off. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> that works. Sometimes my glasses work, sometimes they don't. Okay, that one seems a little bit higher for some reason. I'm just gonna, there we go. As close as I can get it. All right. So let's get some eyelets in there. Yeah, I've had a lot of problems with these new uh, new glasses I got. I don't know why. I got some new eyewear from Zinni online, and I love them. Only I didn't get bifocals. I just got um, the distance ones. And um, so I think I'm going to order another pair. Oh, I did it upside down. That's why it didn't work. Try that again. And it, yeah. See, when, I, when you do it upside down, you get that. Um, let's see if I can get it flatter without distorting it too much on this side. Shoot. Don't usually have any problems with these eyelets. This is... This is me. I think I'm going to take it out. Can I take it out? No, you know what? It's going to get glued down. The thing I'm concerned about is this piece of metal right here. Let's see if I can bend it. I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, I'm not going to worry about it. It's not that noticeable. Okay. So, now we want to glue this flap down, because this will be a tuck spot. Okay, did I go around? Yeah, okay. So, just let that sit for a second. It does take a little bit longer for the craft card to uh, grab onto that glue. Okay. Alright. So this will be tuck spot. Okay. I hope I did that right. Now we need to find a piece for here. So let's look. I'm going to Put a little ink along here. All right, probably on here as well. Okay. So I know this paper is really dark. I'm loving it on my side. I hope it's coming through on your side. Um, let's, we could do that lady. That would be kind of fun, but let's see what else is in here. Um, there might be something with a little vignette at the bottom. 
I do have that we used. Um, that would be fun because it is going to have, if I remember correctly, it's going to have some pockets or something on it. So Patricia has a map on the first one she did and then she has a, like an advertisement. Um, I believe it's going to have a notepad on it. So I think I want to go ahead and use this piece. The question is, do I want to use this? Or do I want to use the lady? If I use the lady, she's going to get covered up and I could put her somewhere else. So I think I'm going to use this. And there again, I'm going to do the five and seven eighths width. Let's see. That way we just have a tiny bit of reveal. See, yeah, I can use that for something else. <clears throat> And then I'm going to need to trim this down as well. So that's going to be just a smidge down. I have to make sure that that can fold up, right? No, it folds in half. Okay. So I apologize for the lawnmower. It won't be long. Hopefully you won't hear it so loud. Sun's trying to beat the 110. All right, I think I will go right about here. So that's like I'm cutting off about three and an eighth. I don't that would make a really cool tag actually. Alright. So let's move this out of the way for a second. We'll go ahead and ink this. <laughs> I have inked around this. Whoops. I have inked around this and I've got I'm going to glue it down. Okay. So I want to um, go ahead and use my bone folder here and make sure that it's nice and glued around because this is actually going to get um, be folded right here. So. Um, sure that I fold this here okay and I think I wonder if I can fold it back just enough to get some ink in there that will look cool all right okay that looks groovy and it, it's already starting to be very firm um, because I'm using the craft uh, collection here. Okay. All right. So that goes down this way. That goes up this way. There's going to be a notepad. We have a tuck spot there and we'll be filling it. So let's fill. Let's I think we need to do something there that's going to be a square. Maybe I could use that same or similar piece to what I have here. This is what I have. I'm not sure that I have. Oh, that would work. That would work. I, I mean, I could do the words. Well, not quite wide enough. Let's do here. And where'd my pencil go? Here we go. And well, we already know that one's going to be five and seven eighths. So let's do five and seven eighths. I want just the handwriting portion. 
and this needs to um, okay I just need to double check this is going to come up this is going to fold up so this does not fold this does not need to fold there it folds here and we have a pocket here so this piece um, can go to there and be glued I think I'll just glue it to here and this looks like I need to take a half an inch off of there so half an inch and then that will get glued glued down right there Okay, so let's ink this. I keep forgetting to put the lid on my glue. And this has that same little background design as this, but very faint under the handwriting, so that's perfect. All right, so let's put that down. Hmm, I think I need another eighth of an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch. Let's see. Um, well, let's try the eighth first. straight. Let's see. Yeah, just a sixteenth more. Just, I don't know if that's an eighth or a sixteenth. Um, because that's a quarter, so kind of need to be like halfway I don't know if it'll cut but just a sliver more and I think that'll that'll work yeah it's gonna leave me these but I'm gonna ink those and it will be fine so let's ink around here ink around here Same thing on this side. So the secret of this envelope, this mystery envelope, is just take your time. Do one step at a time and uh, don't try to rush it. Enjoy the process. I'm going to go ahead and ink this because I'm going to mat that in a minute. Okay, so let's get that right way up and then glued on. Oh, uh, let's, let's do the glue on here because I don't want any glue on the inside in here. Um, well, I don't necessarily need it to not be glued but uh, okay I'm back my son is finished mowing the lawn the dog has stopped barking every time he goes out there to cut the grass the dog goes ballistic I don't know if I ever want a small dog again he is Yorkie and Chihuahua mix and he is oh he just barks all the time and it, it does get on my nerves a little bit but he can also be, you know, so loving. He's a, definitely a lap dog, always has to be on somebody's lap. When I'm working, um, he's in his bed right behind me. He doesn't stray far from... Now, I'm number two. When my husband's home, he's number one. And when I'm not here, my oldest daughter, she's number three, he doesn't care for the other two, and they're not really dog people, and I think that he senses that, but 
yeah, I'll go ahead and ink this one while I'm at it. So I did go ahead and, and pre-cut these pieces to the size that we need to mat this. And there's a little secret spot, a little secret tuck spot. Well, two things to talk about. The reason this I did not want this glued down is because what holds this all together is a tag. And the tag kind of tucks under there. That's how the that's part of the closure. I punched with my circle punch this little hole here just to get the orange out of the way because I'm going to be matting this. And I want this to show not the orange. So that'll be like like that. I need a little bit more ink. So I punched a, another hole at the top with my, yeah, I like it a little bit. The paper's so dark, and I'm using walnut stain, but I still feel like I need more extra ink. And then I found this piece, and uh, because this is going here on the bottom, this kind of needed to coordinate with this handwriting here. So I wanted that to, to coordinate. So that goes there. And then when we pull this down, we'll have this here. Um, I don't remember what goes on this. Um, uh, we'll figure it out in a second. So let's keep that. Go ahead and glue this down. And then we're going to have to kind of um, teach it how to fold in half. Um, I, you know what? I did not want to put glue on that. I did it again. Let's, let's get that down here. I want to put a little, no, I don't want any glue up there like that. So let me get that off. Let it dry. I want to come around here like this. And then we'll glue here. I know it goes almost to the edge, so normally I put the glue on the smaller piece. That way you don't have ooze. But, um, oh, and then I'm going to have to punch that hole out the side as well. Because I punched all the way through both pieces, and I should have just done the top. Not that it matters, but let's see, make sure that's not, not sticky. Somewhat tacky, but I think it's dry enough. All right, I'm gonna line this up at the bottom first. And then kind of slide that up. I guess I don't really need to cut a hole there, or punch it, because it's going to it's going to show like this with that piece behind it. That wouldn't be the worst thing, but yeah, I think I'll go go ahead and punch it. What do I do with my punch board? All right, stick that under there. Was it? I don't want it to go crooked. There we go. That works. That works. Okay, so... A little bit of glue there. Alright, now we want to show this how to fold right here. Just slowly ease the paper in. Do kind of a with my bone folder, and that's going to go up. Yeah, so with all these layers, you definitely need something. 
some kind of closure. You could use a paper clip. I, you know, you could use something. But all right, so I need to ink around this. I apologize for this video being so long. I I may uh, fast forward through some of it. And apparently I was supposed to put the notepad on first so that I could um, get some eyelets or brads or something in there, but I did not. So I will be attaching mine differently. Um, but if you want to see how Patricia did it, you can uh, check out her video. There again, no, no right or wrong, just different. And... Uh, more than one option. All right, let's get this on here. Like that. Okay, I really like that. That is looking cool. Okay, so um, we have a fold up, we have a fold down. We have a pocket, we have a pocket, um, then when we lift this up, we have a tuck spot, and when we attach this to the page, there's going to be a hidden spot down here. So, I need to open that up, and I forgot about that, so I need to just, you know what, I think I'm going to use my scissors rather than the cutter because there's very little room here. I want to come right on the edge because I would like some of that orange to still, well, the envelope to be revealed still. I went a little crooked, but that's okay. I did not glue this part of this envelope down. I did it on the other one, but sometimes these guys have a mind of their own. That's going to be attached to the back of the Avery style envelope. So um, hopefully it won't blend in too much. I don't remember what I used for the Avery envelope, but I guess we'll find out. All right, so I am going to put a notch uh, in here. And this will be glued completely down to the page, to the back of the envelope, Avery envelope, so that we will have this. But then we will have a tuck spot down there with a tag. So, let's bring that up. This piece is six, so this should be three. And I wish there was a ruler on this side as well. That would be helpful. Um... Just double check. I'm pretty sure this is right at six. Yeah. Oh, goodness. I don't know if I can go through there. Ah. Goodness. Too many layers. <laughs> okay. Let's put a little ink down there. So this is where we are at. I need to make a paper. Let's find some coffee dyed paper. I have that and then I need a piece to bind it with. And let's see. Probably going to make it about four inches wide, so I don't need all of this. Some of it's torn, some of it's dark, some of it's light. Um, in fact, I kind of think I'd like to tear it. So let's line it up here. 
and I'm not worried about it being perfect. One, two, three, four. And I'm just going to tear a few at a time. Save this for something else. And then I will fold this in half and we'll use this. Kind of like to mix up the colors a little bit. Do we need it longer than that? No, I think that's just about right. We don't want it too fat, but we don't need it. We want it, you know, enough that it's an actual paper uh, pad. So I think I'm going to use this, and I'm going to cut that down to four on the side that's not folded. Okay, and then we can score that down the middle. If we know where the scoreboard is, or the score, I really don't like, oh, here it is. I really like this one better. Half inch. Okay, fold that in half. Let's ink around this. Actually, I think I'm going to round these corners on the side. Let's see how. Yeah. And. over the top. I think that's too much. I don't think I need that much. So let's take out let's take out those two. Yeah. I think that yeah, that's much better. Put that over there. And let's punch some holes. I'm not going to measure this time. I'm just going to eyeball it. And we'll put some eyelets in. Trying to hold it so it doesn't lose its place. Which side? I like this side better. Let's do this the correct way this time so we don't end up with a mess. These don't feel the same. Okay, yeah, it did fine. A little tougher. Alright, so this I think is going to go right here and I am just going to glue that down. Believe it or not, I filled up this bottle all the way to the top. I use a lot of glue. All right, just gluing this. You could put a ribbon through there, but I don't have ribbon anywhere and it's kind of bulky, so I'm just going to do this. All right, and the paper is a little wonky, but that's okay. Just get that in there. Oops. I may cut out some of this glue holding, uh, but just know that you want to hold it down until it's good and attached. So this matches this. That's nice. Yeah, that's got the writing paper in there. That's fine. And then you can still see. You could even stick a little pocket under there if you wanted to. Okay. I think we're good. All right. Okay, guys. Let's finish this up. 
This is our Avery style envelope. We are going to attach this to the back side. So the first thing we want to do, um, let me walk you through this. This gets attached like this, and yes, I should have chosen different papers. Hmm. Uh, not much I can do about it at this time, but this is going to be our closure. This is a tag. I cut it four by eight. I cut off the one inch of the corners, scored it half inch on the bottom. Um, this gets attached to the center of this page, okay? And then this will get attached underneath, and this will be our closure, okay? Now, I'd like it to go in like that, but then I don't have enough room on the bottom, really, for uh, putting a tag down here. So, I am going to do as um, Patricia suggested, and I am going to cut off a little bit of this and just make it shorter. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go a half an inch, um, like that. Okay, and then I'll punch my hole again. Punch my notch. Um, <clears throat> see if I can do it without all the extra huffing and puffing. <laughs> all right, still looks cool, but that way um, I will have a little more more room at the bottom to get a tag in this pocket without interfering with that tag closure. So just gonna ink that up a little bit. Okay, so this will come about here. This gets centered here, and yes, that will tuck right inside that. So that gives me a little bit more room. Okay, so let's, let's, um, this gets covered on both sides. I really love this collection. I do wish, uh, there were some pieces that were a little lighter with a little bit more contrast, but uh, this one might work. And, well, let's do this one first. And we can cover our tag with that. Um, the reason I'm not just using this is because it is a little flimsier than this, and I want it because it's a closure, I need it to be sturdy. So our tag is four by eight. So I'm gonna cut a piece that is just under four by eight. So three and seven eighths. And seven and seven eighths. And then my main concern is how to cut that part up the top. Um, oh, I didn't need it to be that long because, okay, I can cut off a half an inch because I forgot about that. So. probably cannot see on this background so I'm just gonna line that up down there and yeah I'm gonna go ahead and cut these here and then come back and I'm gonna do it on this side just trim another sixteenth of an inch there Hopefully that will work. Let's ink this base piece. Both sides. After I mat it, we'll punch a hole and put an eyelet there. Ink 
this piece. one. When I get this one right, I'm going to, okay, I need to trim down just a smidge more on these. I, I hope this is the last section of this video. I've had one interruption after another, but my husband is home and he can take care of the dogs. I don't have to worry about him every time the doorbell rings. Um, all right, so I made a tag that I decided to use Our Lady, and she measures one, two, three, four and a half by one, two, three, four, six and a quarter ish. Um, and then I cut this piece uh, two by three to make a tab for the bottom. And I used my uh, punch, where is it? Um, I rounded this corner. I rounded the open side corners. And then I just punched um, both sides here to make this tab. And I've inked it up. And I'm just going to attach that to the bottom. And go ahead and... enough glue on there and I'm just going to let's see I want to somewhat center that that looks about right does it if not I can move it around a little bit whoops go about three quarters just a smidge more I think that'll work so this is our tag that's going to go inside this uh, let's see it goes this way this is our tag that's and they'll be able to write on the back that's going to go inside this pocket. And the reason I wanted to go ahead and make the tag was so that I could um, um, make sure that I have enough room between that and this on our page and still be able to close that. And that works. So let's go ahead and attach that. Um, this is the back of our Avery envelope, and I didn't decorate this or anything, and you know it occurred to me after that I totally could have just folded this the other way, and then it would have been decorated on the inside, and it would have been solid on the outside. Uh, and had I not punched all these holes, I could have done that, but that's okay. All right, so this is the way it goes. We're going to do the back side. I have gone ahead and matted both sides of this, and we have this little score piece, so some glue down there. This piece is going to get centered on this page. So that's almost almost eight inches. Let's see. Yeah. I think it needs to go over a smidge because um, well no, that'll work. That's about, that's about right. And I just want that to be on there. And I got some glue here. This is like the video that never ends, isn't it? <laughs> I think the next one should be shorter. I don't know. I believe the next one is the uh, French bulletin board. So, we shall see. I want to clip that down a little bit. I think I'm going to add that just to hold it for a second. And, um, yeah, so this, this is fun, but I, I, 
I would have had a way more fun if I didn't have so many interruptions and oh my word so I had two different Amazon deliveries and a mail delivery and my Walmart groceries and then my son cutting the grass so perhaps I should have waited until tomorrow to do a video <laughs> but that's okay um, we needed to conquer the magic envelope um, or, or the mystery envelope um, I keep calling it magic it's mystery all right now we're gonna pull this down and I'm gonna attach this like so centered as well and then this will come up and yes tuck right inside there so let me get glue on the back of this and that'll be it for this episode guys I discovered this new channel and I don't know the name of it um, but I found it canning and it's it's in another country I want to say as Azerbaijan I don't know where it's somewhere near Turkey but it's it's like one of those uh, what do you call it a ASMR videos that there's no talking it's just nature sounds and the sound of the work they're doing they do canning and preserving and gardening and uh, they have farm animals and oh my gosh it is so addictive to watch addicting addicting addictive I don't know I I've just I'm really getting a kick out of watching it okay let's center that I'm leaving just a smidge um, just a smidge I don't know if this will reach or not nope so probably need to put something heavy on top of that too bad I don't have any big dictionaries I have a a big book but it, it's I don't it's weird it's real light paper um, and so it feels I think oh that's gonna be heavy and I pick it up and it's light so anyway did I finish what I was saying about this channel uh, this they do you know in other countries they do canning so different than we do here and um, it's fascinating to watch the things that they make and I think the first video that came up was uh, she was making baklava and um, just oh my gosh this woman works works herself so hard and it, it's just it's amazing to me we we are spoiled um, anyway I just love it the animals they have little cute little goats and kitties and rabbits and the cats and the rabbits play and the dogs plays with the sheep and it's just fun and gorgeous absolutely beautiful I don't know if it's the Caucasus Mountains where they are but it is gorgeous um, reminds me of the sound of music when they show the Swiss Alps so all right there guys I think we got it um, make sure I didn't glue this no all right and then this flips up and tucks in here like such and holds everything together so the only thing that I did not do uh, I need to do an eyelet here but that's going to take me two seconds um, depending um, on how much uh, how much bulk is in this when we get to the end um, will determine what ribbon I put in here or string or what have you so there we go all right so that like I said that just tucks kind of bends that's why I wanted it to be sturdy and there we go so we've got this side we've got this side and I will come back and add some other decorations here and there but um, I'm wondering if I should have added um, a little eyelet or something here to kind of keep that tighter but we'll we'll see I think we'll I think it'll be okay and uh, all right we'll be back next time thanks for watching bye now